right after this service, and we want to encourage you to stay and be with us in that service. And special service to me, and uh, I'm sure it will be to you. And uh, I want to welcome, say welcome to all of our visitors this morning. We've got a, not, a number of visitors with us, and we're glad you're here, and we hope you can find you a place. Didn't that choir sound great this morning? Amen. Amen. Brother Herb, that Jerusalem song, it always does something for me, and, and I always love to hear Brother Herb sing it. We had a a real good time here Wednesday night. I want to encourage you to be with us on a Wednesday night now, our last missionary candidate. And then next Sunday, uh, by the, uh, the Lord's will, we'll be taking our uh, faith promise for the year. I want to encourage you to be there next Sunday as we uh, take our faith promise for missions in the next year. All right. If you have your Bible, uh, 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1, please. I want to, uh, glad to see my daughter and her husband back. Amen. Answered prayer. You want to know what it looks like? Just turn around and look right there. Amen. <laughs> That's answered prayer right there. If you want to know what some more looks like, look right over here. There's some sitting there. That's answered prayer. And, uh, you know, isn't it good to know that God answers prayer? Amen. Amen. Have a God in heaven who loves us, who hears us when we pray, and, and uh, he answers our prayer and gives us those things that we need. Uh, First John, I'm trying to find it. I'm all messed up this morning. I got uh, so sick last week that uh, I couldn't be here. I want to apologize to you for that. And uh, I was, uh, you know, I told them on Wednesday night, I felt like I, had, I was so sick I'd have to get better to die. And uh, I was up all night long, and uh, it was just one of those kind of things. And then I went up there and gave it to Sharon, and Sharon got sick, and she was in the middle of uh, a tragedy, and then her whole family got sick, and, and I, all because of one hug in the driveway, amen. And... Uh, and I, I'm sorry, Sharon. I didn't mean to do that to you. And uh, but anyhow, uh, I, that's why I didn't come Sunday because I knew it's going to be the same thing. I, I would rather stay home on Sunday night, stay in bed, and bring it down here and give it to 50 people in this place. And if you if, if you'd have had what I'd had, you'd you'd just uh, hug my neck and say thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. Uh, got some good things going on this morning. And uh, if you have your Bibles, First John chapter number one, please. Let's all stand in reverence to the reading of God's word. Look down about verse 5, 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. Uh, this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in the darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanseth us from all sin. Boy, isn't that good? If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Well, isn't that something? His word is not in us. My little children, these things write unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now, when you read that, I believe that in those verses of Scripture, that John gives us how we can win over sin. And I want to preach to you on that subject, how you can win over sin. Let's bow our, let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Our, our fathers, we come to you. We thank you for this day and for all that you give. I, I thank you for all that this day means and all that holds for us today. I pray that you'd bless everyone that's assembled here this day. But most of all, I pray for those who may have come today, some who may have uh, made a profession of faith and perhaps drifted away from God. I pray that this would be a time of rededication for them. I pray for those that might be here, God, that uh, maybe have never been saved and come to the saving knowledge and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. I ask you about the power of your mighty hand that you would speak to them and draw them that they might be saved and experience what others have experienced. We pray, God, now that you, I ask you that you would bless me and use me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Be seated, please. I, you know, I, when I wanted to come to a text this morning, I had on this thing on my heart for several weeks, and it just would not go away. And I tried to go in another direction, and I wouldn't, couldn't get the liberty to do that. And so I want to talk to you about how you can win over sin. Now, when you, when you bring up the subject of sin, it's just about like some other subjects. You know, we live in a day when they want us to be politically correct. And if we say certain things, they say, well, that's not politically correct. Well, we live in a, in a day in religious circles many times where certain things are considered not to be spiritually correct. 
Like, and, and when I say that, you don't hear many people talk about sin anymore. I mean, and you don't hear many preachers that will get up and preach on the subject of sin. Yet the Bible declares that we're all sinners. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. It's, you know, I, I, I thought as I was preparing to preach this message, and I preached Easter time a, a, a while back, I preached on man's two problems. You know, we got two problems, and the problem of sin and the problem of death. And, and you do, do you realize that Jesus came to give us uh, to victory over those two problems? On, with his death on the cross, he gave us victory over sin. And with his resurrection, he gave us victory over death. And so uh, today we're going to talk about the subject of sin and, and what to do. And, and, and most of us don't have any problem realizing that sin is still around. I mean, in our day and time, you know, we have, uh, we have people that slip off into sin uh, and we don't have to uh, name what every sin is, but we know that sin is running rapid in our world. We see the effects that it's having on our nation. We see the morals that, of our nation that it's sinking lower and lower and lower. And there's one thing that we can talk about, and that's a little thing called sin. Now, now John talks about sin in this passage, and, and you're going to say, uh, I want to give you today what John has to say about the subject of sin. And there are a lot of people out there who say uh, that they're not sinners, that way they haven't sinned or they don't have a sin nature. Well, you're going to find out uh, that John's going to deal with that subject. And you're going, as you look at the text, uh, uh, if you're a Christian today, you have to realize the fact that your sins have been forgiven and that you have a brand new life. Uh, when you got saved, uh, you were washed clean in the blood of Jesus Christ and every sin was forgiven. It was cleansed, totally totally cleansed by, his, uh, by that life-giving flow. But you have to realize that sometimes in your Christian life, uh, we still have to deal with sin. It, it happens and, and, and we find ourselves sometimes, even though we're, uh, we don't like to admit it, even in the midst of the Christian life, sometimes, boom, there it is. And it's sin. Well, what do you do? When you're, as a Christian, you, you come to the realization that there's something that, uh, there's something that arises in your life and you need to do business with it. I'll tell you, you need to call it what it is and get rid of it, amen? But as you look at it, you're going to find in chapter 1, he tells us another reason why he's written the book. And he said, uh, he said I'm writing these things that you sin not. Now, John's not talking about becoming sinless. But what he is talking about, it, it is possible for you to sin less. And... and <laughs> I read a story one time about a, a preacher, and he, he asked the question, is there anybody in this room who knows a perfect person? And it went on a little while, and all of a sudden, back in the back, a little guy stood up, and he held up his hand like that, and he said, you, you mean you know somebody that's perfect? And he said, yes, I do. It's my wife's first husband. <laughs> <laughs> and, but the problem, there's nobody that's perfect, and what are we going to do how are we going to deal with it? How are we going to have the victory over it when it comes into our life? Hey, if you're here today, maybe you've never had your sins uh, forgiven. Maybe you're, out, uh, maybe you're in the place in your life where you need to just be saved. You need an initial cleansing. I'm going to talk about that. But if, we're going to, if you're going to win over sin, number one, you need to understand. The first thing you need to understand is that your sins need to be cleansed. All right? Listen, I'm taking you somewhere. And that's what you find in verses 5, 6, and 7 of 1 John. In those verses, he tells us how, how our sins can be cleansed. And he, he begins to talk about the nature of God. You know, when you talk about the nature of God, uh, he says positively, God is light. And, and, and negatively, he said, in him there is no darkness at all. And, and, and he's talking about who God is. And, and that's the kind of God that God is. I told him in Sunday school class this morning, one of the number one problems in America today is most people have a flawed concept of God. They don't see God the way he really is. There are a lot of people that look at God like he's some gray-haired grandpa uh, that just says, oh, it's all right, I know you can't help it. That's not the way God is at all. God, listen, he's a holy God. It, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And, and we need to get a, a real concept of who God is. And so when he talks about the sin question, it begins with knowing who God is. That God is a God of light. He's a holy God. And in him is no darkness at all. And, and so as, he, as, he, as you look at the text, he talks about God being light. Now, we got to try to discern what does he mean by that? Well, I believe he's talking about when he says there's no darkness in him at all. 
He's talking about his nature. And we need to understand what kind of God that God is when we view sin the way we ought to view sin. Because if you see him the way he is, you'll see yourself the way that you really are. Amen. Now, now, there are some people, John says, who walk in darkness. And they say they're having fellowship with God. I'm going to ask you something. Have you ever met a person like that? They, it seems like their whole life is spent in darkness. And they say they're having fellowship with God. And, and, and John kind of clears that, <coughs> clears that up. He says in verse 6, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, are you listening? I didn't say it. It's wrote in the book. So if you get mad at me, don't get mad at me. Amen. It says in the verse, we lie and do not the truth. He's saying God's light. If you're going to have fellowship with him, you're going to have to walk in the light. And if you're walking in darkness, you're really not in fellowship with God. And I know a lot of folks that will that, 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 say, yeah, I'm a Christian. I'm right with God. And they're walking in darkness. The Bible says if you say that, you lie. Amen. Now, I didn't write it. I'm just reporting it. It's either amen or oh me. And, 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 and you may, when you get saved, the Bible says he takes you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, the kingdom of light. I'm translated from one kingdom to the other. Amen. And, and in Ephesians 5, 8 says, for you were sometimes darkness, but now you're a light and walk therefore as children of light. And he's saying, and he says, if you claim that you're in fellowship with God and living for the Lord and yet there's sin in your life, he says, you're lying through your teeth. Amen. Amen. I didn't write, hey, <laughs> I'm just going to preach what it says, all right? Hey, and, and there's a lot of people out there that's liking that, that, that are saying that. Hey, when you come to Christ, you begin to live for the Lord, and when you begin to live for the Lord in fellowship with God, and when you get in the light, you begin to see the dark spots in your heart. I don't know how it was for you, but if you begin to walk in the light, if you begin to walk in the light of his word, and you begin to walk in the light of, of, of his a person and, his, and have fellowship with him. You know what's going to happen? All of a sudden, the closer you get to God, you're going to get to see some dark spots in your life. Hey, he'll turn the light on. You'll see what you couldn't see before. Now, most people have never experienced total darkness, but I have. I used to be a coal miner for 16 years. And, and I, I, worked, I worked underground, miles underground. And, and there was no real light at all in that place. If you've ever sat down, I'll tell you what I used to do. I used to get scared to do it, but I'd, I'd sit down against the rib and turn off my light. And I'd think every time I'd do it, what am I going to do if it don't come back on? <laughs> and I've experienced total darkness. I was, I was in the darkness, and I, I couldn't see anything. But I'll tell you what, and, and you sit there, and your light, and your eyes begin to adjust, and the fact that it's total darkness, your mind will play tricks on you. You do your hand like that, and all of a sudden, you think you see that thing moving. And you can't see nothing. And by the way, it goes along with what something else it says, we deceive ourselves. But nevertheless, when you turn on the light, you begin to see things that you've never seen before. And that's exactly what happens when you get in fellowship with God. And you begin to get closer to God and you're having fellowship with him and you're walking and fellowship with God's people and you're walking in the light. I'll tell you what, God's going to show, God's going to show you some dark spots in your life. Amen. He's going, to, he's going to expose the sin that's there. And if you walk in the light, as he's in the light, you have fellowship, uh, you, you, you have fellowship one with, with, with God and have fellowship with one another. And, and as you look at it, you need, to, you need to realize that if we walk in the light, according to the verse, as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Now think about it. If you're walking in the light and having fellowship with God, you have to realize now, if you, how, a preacher, what do I, how am I going to win over sin? Number one, they have to be cleansed. And if they're going to be cleansed, you're going to have to walk in the light. You're going to have to come to the place in the, rea the realization as you walk with God and see the dark spots, you're walking in the light, the blood of Jesus Christ begins to cleanse you. Now, let me, <laughs> I like it, amen. It gets better, all right? But, but you, let me give you two things. Number one, there's the initial cleansing. Now, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you realize that what you need today is, a, is radical initial cleansing. You need to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Say, preacher, how can I, what can I do with all the sin that's in my life? 
I'll tell you what, if you come to him, and I'm going to get ahead of myself just a little bit, and confess your sins, I'll tell you what God's going to do. He's going to cleanse you of every sin. Amen. Amen. I don't care what it is. Hey, and, 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 and he'll cleanse you. That's the initial cleansing when I came to Christ. And, and by the way, that's a type in the Old Testament. You remember the Old Testament uh, priest when he came into the, uh, the tabernacle, he came into the enclosure. The first thing he went to was the brazen altar. That was initial cleansing. That's Jesus Christ, the sacrifice, sacrifice for our sins on the cross of Calvary. And, and listen, uh, that was our brazen altar, the cross of Calvary. And I got my initial cleansing. But I'll tell you what, as you walk on and progress, and you, before, as you get to the presence of God, you'll find that he came next to the golden laver. And, and when he came to that laver, it was water on the top and water on the bottom. And he didn't have to go back to the brazen altar before he could get to the presence of God. If he got defiled between the brazen altar and, and between, and between the, uh, the laver, all he had to do was go to that laver and stick his hands in the top and wash his hands and put his feet in the bottom bowl and wash his feet. And every now and then, as you walk with God, you'll have to come to the laver and say, I don't need that initial cleansing. It already took place at Calvary. But I need this, I need this continual cleansing cleansing of the blood of Jesus Christ. I've come to get my hands clean and my feet clean. And some people need that, amen. If you're here today, there's the initial cleansing and then there's that continual cleansing. That's what it talks about in this verse. You see, when you come to him and you walk in the light, I'll tell you what, his blood cleanses you from all sin. And I, I'm so glad that as I walk in the light, I can have fellowship with him, and as I have fellowship with him, he cleanses me from A L L. All sin. Now, if I'm gonna have if I'm gonna win over sin, number one, are you listening? I have to realize my sins have to be cleansed, and there's only one thing that'll cleanse it, and that's the blood of Christ. But number two, my sins have to be confessed. Notice in the in the verse. Verses eight. 9 and 10, he says this. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth's not in us. And if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, when you look at those verses, you, 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 you notice, I mean, let, me, let, me, let me give you just a little something. You mark this in your Bible and you can study if you want. You don't have to take everything I say on face value. But if you want to be right, you'll, you'll agree with me. Amen. <laughs> you thought I was kidding, but I'm not. But yeah. Notice it says if we confess our sins. Now that word, that word right there, if you look at it, it's a noun. And, and when you look at the words, if we say that we have no sin in that verse, you're going to find out when it says, it says we say we have no sin, that it's talking about a sin nature. And it's, it's like saying, well, I'm not a sinner. I'm going to tell you, the Bible says all have sinned. Amen. Amen. And, and, and if, you, if you go a little farther, you'll find it says that we have not sinned. And that's a verb. And it's talking about acts of sin. And so when it comes right down to it, uh, there's two things that you can do with your sin. Are you listening? Listen to me. You can either cover your sin... And say, I'm not a sinner, I have not sinned. And I'm going to tell you, the Bible says when you do that, that you're lying. Because God declares everybody's a sinner, and we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you try to, and, and the Bible says, he that covereth his sin shall not prosper. Hey, or you can confess your sin. Now, what does that mean, preacher, confess your sin? Well, the word confess means to agree with. And you're disagreeing with what God says about your sin. Hey, when God says you've sinned, you need, to, you need to come clean and say, yes, I know I've sinned. And you need to confess that sin to him if you want to maintain the fellowship that you have with him. Amen. Your sin, number one, has to be uh, cleansed. Your sin, number two, has to be confessed. A woman came to the preacher one time and said, preacher, I'd like to, I'd like to uh, confess sin, but I don't, know, I don't know what they are. And he told her, he said, well, just get down there at the altar and guess at it. And he said, you know what happened? She got it right the first time. <laughs> Hey, if you're here, hey, hey, our, your sin has to be cleansed and it has to be confessed and you need to come I, and you need to agree with what God says about it. When you say I have not sinned, you know, we don't like to agree with what God says about sin anymore. 
We used to say, well, there's a credibility problem. We don't like to say that somebody lied. We used to like to say, well, it, uh, we call drunkenness alcohol addiction. We call adultery an affair. We call, uh, we call something anger. We call it righteous indignation. Why, why don't we just call it what God calls it, amen? Sin. And there's the problem. And the, the word confess means uh, I agree with God. I agree with what God says about it. Call it anger. Call it wicked temper. Call it what it is. But get any, by all means, uh, confess it and, and, and be cleansed of the sin that's, that, that, that you have there. And that's what every one of us need to do. If you're going to win over sin, number one, it has to be cleansed. And there's only one thing that can cleanse it, and that's the blood of Jesus Christ. If you're going to win over sin, number two, it has to be confessed. Now, by the way, you ain't confessing it to me. See, I, get into, I, get, I show where I'm from every now and then. You ain't confessing it to me. <laughs> Say, preacher, don't worry about it. You're not all that refined anyway. So, <laughs> Hey. You don't have to confess to me. You confess to him. Amen. And if you want to win over sin, number one, it has to be cleansed. Number two, it has to be confessed. And, and, and when, you, when you come to God and say, I've sinned, I'll tell you what he does. He, he takes the blood of Jesus Christ. He cleanses you. Fellowship's restored. Hey, number three, are you listening? Third truth here I want you to see, and it's, it's, it's a great thing, and I don't, want to, I don't want to miss it while we go. If you're going to win over sin, number three, the third truth is your sin. I want you to know how sin's conquered. And I said, preacher, what do you mean? Well, I want you to notice in the verse, my little children, these things write unto you that you sin not. He's writing to save people there, right? He said, I don't want you to sin. And by the way, you know, I know a lot of people have the idea, and I was reading through a thing, a commentary on this the other day, that they think forgiveness is, no, he, wants you, he doesn't want you to do it. Are you listening to me? The, ba the Baptist National Anthem is 1 John 1, 9. <laughs> if we confess our sins faithful and just, forgive us our sins to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And, then, and they, they kind of wear that out on their chest like, it's all right if I do it because God will forgive me of it anyway. Boy, that's bad theology right there. Hey, he don't want you, he don't want you to do it. And he said, I don't want you to do it. But if you do, <laughs> but if you do, it's not the end of the world. Hey, my little children, these things right unto you that you sin not. But he goes on, he says, well, I know how it is. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Hey, when you look at that, the word advocate, you ought to circle that word in your Bible because that's a Bible word. And what it means is one called alongside of it. And really what it means is you've got a defense attorney. You realize in heaven you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And, and, uh, and when you look at that, I've got an attorney in heaven. That, but I've also got an accuser. Do you realize that, that the devil is the accuser of the brethren? Well, I'm, I'm going to preach here in a minute, so you stay with me, all right? The devil is the accuser of the brethren. The Bible says he stands before the throne of God to accuse us night and day. And, and he's there, and, and he makes accusation. He brings charges against us in heaven. And, 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 you know, and here's the way it is. Now, court's in session in heaven. And you've sinned on earth, and you're a born-again child of God. And, and Christ has paid for that sin, and the penalty for, for your sin, it's been put away. And, and, and you're supposed to have victory. And he won, he won that on the cross of Calvary. And, and so now Satan's in, in heaven, and he's accusing you, but your, your advocate steps to the bar. And he says, yeah, I know he's guilty. And you say, but I want you to know something. I, I paid for that, Father. <laughs> he blew it. But he, he says, he holds out the hands. He looks, he pulls up his shirt. And he said, I want you to know it's all taken care of. It's under the blood. I, I died for it. And, and he said, I know he's guilty, but... but but I paid the price for that sin. It's been covered in my blood. And... and, 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 and you know, uh, the old devil sent up prayer. Look at that guy. He claims to be saved. He claims to be your child. And he's a member of Big Bottom Missionary Baptist Church. But he said, Father, I paid for that. Amen. And if you're here, you need to realize that in heaven, you know, I know some people that say, well, I messed up. I just give up. I quit. Preach, hey, don't do that. 
Come today and rededicate your life to Jesus Christ. Because there's a Father in heaven who wants to forgive that skin. And, and, and you've got an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And, and even though the devil might accuse us in heaven, uh, my, our defense attorney stands for us and says, Listen, I paid the price for all that. It's covered in my blood. And he belongs to me. For, uh, hey, he's the propitiation for our sins and not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. Let me give you this. I'm going to close with this illustration. I don't know how many have ever heard of him, but there's a, an evangelist called Charles Finney. And Charles Finney was preaching a revival meeting. And, and a woman came to him in the meeting. She said, sir, would you come to my house? She said, my husband is at the point of suicide. And I wish you could come and talk to him. I believe you could help him. The people who were around her said, don't go there. That's the meanest guy in town. Do not go to the house. And Brother Finney said, I'll go. And so he went there and and he, as he came, as he approached it, he saw a saloon and, and he was led to an apartment above that saloon. And when he got there, here sat a man with a gun in his hand. And he said, are you Charles Finney? He said, yes, I am. He said, are you the one that's preaching that revival meeting? He said, uh, yes, I am. And he said, Mr. Finney, with this gun, I've killed four men. Is there any hope for me? And Mr. Finney said, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And, and he said, uh, he said, I, he said I don't, you don't understand. He said, I run this saloon. And he said, I've corrupted the lives of, of many men. And he said, I've caused them to spend their money and take, I've taken money out of children's mouth. Is there any hope for me? He said, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. He said, but Mr. Finney, downstairs, there's a little woman. He said, I've, he said, I beat her up. And he said, I've abused her. He said, I've done her wrong. And he said, I've, I, I, I've, I've abused my children. He said, is there any hope for me? He said, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. I want to tell you today, I don't know who you are. I don't know where you came from. I don't know what your circumstance is, but I can tell you that you can win over sin. Your sin can be cleansed if it's confessed and it can be conquered because Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from A-L-L, -L, all sin, amen. You can win over sin. If you're here today and... I don't know your story. There's a lot of people in here I don't even know. I don't know where you are. I don't know where you have came from. I, I don't know what, but I do know this. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I do know that he says, my little children, these things write unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, but if you do, I've got something for you. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from A-L-L -L, all sin. Bow your head with me if you would. <coughs> Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Nobody's looking around. I want to ask you one of the most important questions anybody will ever ask you this side of eternity. How many of you who are sitting under the sound of my voice today can say, Preacher, I'm saved and I know it. If Jesus comes or I should die, I'm ready to go to heaven to be with him. And you raise your hand high as a witness for Jesus. Saved and I know it. Boy, that's good. That's good. You take it down. I realize there's some people who couldn't raise their hand for some reason. I don't know what it is. But God knows all about it. Maybe you're here this morning and unsaved. I want to tell you, you need to come and give your heart to Jesus. I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've been. There's a God in heaven who loves you and wants to save you. And his son, Jesus Christ, has already paid the price for your sin. If you'll come today and give your heart and life to him, he'll forgive you. I wonder if I might have one person who couldn't raise their hand and say they were saved and say, Preacher, I couldn't raise my hand and say I'm saved, but I'm concerned. Would you pray for me? You slip it up. And I'm not coming back to you and just say, Preacher, pray for me. Clip it up and take it back down. Anybody? I wonder how many of God's people be here today and say, Preacher, you told the truth. I made a profession of faith. 
I'm not where I ought to be. There's some things that are lacking in my life. Best way to describe me is out of fellowship. I'm not walking in the light. You're, you're right. Preacher, would you pray for me? And you slip your hand up quick and take it back down. Is anybody like that at all? Anybody at all? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the liberty to preach. Thank you for your blessing. I pray, God, that you'd work in a special way today that only you know and you can. God, speak to every heart. Help me to do your will. I pray, Father, that you would save some lost soul. I pray that some wayward soul would you dedicate. God, thank you for the precious blood of Jesus Christ, yes, your amen. son. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And amen. We're going to sing just a minute. We're going to sing number 478. Maybe you're here today and you'd like to rededicate your life to the Lord Jesus. Maybe you've never, maybe it's been a long time since you made a trip to the altar. It'd do you some good this morning. Maybe you're here and you're unsaved. You've never known Christ. Why don't you just step out of your seat this morning and come. We're going to sing number 478. We invite you, we encourage you to come. There's a God in heaven who cleanses, confess sin through his blood. You come, would you? 478. Let's stand, would you?